Well, um, very big welcome and good morning to everybody um, and welcome to the session. I'm uh, Gabriel, uh, one of the management executives at First Digital. And uh, as you might have guessed correctly, uh, First Digital is a first technology company. We're very excited about today's event uh, to give you this great overview of how machine learning and artificial intelligence is starting to creep into our businesses. Um, all of us would agree that making our companies and our people more efficient is important and identifying areas and processes that can be approved or possibly automated is crucial to, to staying competitive uh, in today's world. Before we start, just a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, today's session will be recorded uh, and I've had a few requests from people already that couldn't make this morning session about that recording. Um, it, it's normally available a couple of days after the session and we'll make that link available on our YouTube channel and share it um, uh, and share it with your account manager and everybody that registered for, for today's event. Due to the size of the audience, everybody will be muted. And we ask that if you have any questions, is to use the Q&A function in the Teams client. You'll find a, a Q&A uh, icon uh, at the top of your Teams client. When you click on that, it'll open up a, a window on, on the right-hand side and you can use that to post your questions. And what we'll do is we'll allow enough time at the end of the session to, to cover those questions. And in the unlikely event that we don't get to, to answer all questions, uh, we'll reach out to you directly afterwards and we'll be sharing our contact details obviously for you to make contact with us. So, so in today's session uh, we'll have a, br a brief look at chat uh, GPT. I mean it dominates almost any formal and informal formal conversation these days and how it's taken the world by storm. But more importantly the intention of today's session is to investigate and look at areas where machine learning can be used by businesses and by your business. The session will be hosted by Shal Kutsia, he's one of our senior managers in our automation division. Um, and I'd also like to welcome uh, Freddy Jonker, who represents the technology that Shal will be demonstrating at uh, Nintex. Uh, Freddy is the regional manager for, um, uh, for Nintex. Um, and Freddy will also be available to cover any questions at the end of the session, um, if there are uh, you know, any that pertains to him himself. Um, Great, so a quick overview of First Digital. Um, we're, a, uh, we're a first technology subsidiary. Um, we have four core value propositions, which is what you can see on the screen in front of you. Um, our innovation team focuses on application development, mobile development, complicated transactional websites, such as e-commerce, uh, where, where there's often very complicated integration requirement, and, and also our DevOps, uh, our, our, our IoT and our quality assurance disciplines uh, exist inside that business unit. I've already introduced Shoal. He represents our automation and integration business, and, and these guys focus uh, focuses on process automation, typically using low code development tool sets such as Nintex, K2, OutSystems, etc. Um, and then on the left hand side, there our digital workplace team. Um, this is our uh, business that focus on value added services around Office 365. Uh, and that includes uh, Power Platform, um, Power Automate, uh, uh, Teams, deploying apps and hosting them inside Teams, making your Teams act like you know a modern intranet, um, and also an area that is uh, of a lot of interest in businesses these days is employee engagement programs. Um, so our Microsoft Viva capability sits inside that team. And then lastly, data and analytics team pretty much are uh, a, a Microsoft shop uh, focused shop um, that look at everything from SQL Server as, as a piece of infrastructure all the way through to data visualization using the likes of Synapse and, and Power BI. Right, so before we um, uh, get cracking, I, I, we'd like to submit a poll to the audience. So you'll see that poll question pop up in your Teams client. Um, today's question that we'd like to pose to the audience is, have you ever in your business used tools or try and identify tools, specifically tools that try and identify automation possibilities in your company? Any kind of monitoring tool or tool set to help you find out where the open automation opportunities are within your business? So I'll give everybody a, a, a few seconds to answer that poll and then we'll discuss the results of that in the, in the question and answer section. 
Okay, great. It got just over 30 responses, so thank you. Well, still climbing. Over 40 responses now, so thank you for that. Uh, it seems like the overwhelming uh, majority of you have not deployed such tools um, and has either not planned it or, or are interested in such tools. And, and I think that's why today's session will be so valuable to you because we are going to specifically talk about this um, about this topic. Um, at the heart of First Digital, uh, we take customers on a digital transformation journey. Uh, automation is key to this. So in this session, Shaul will explain how technology is evolving and how it's disrupting businesses and how you can apply some of the tools that's coming out of that in your own business. So without further ado, uh, Shaul, over to you. Great. Thank you very much, Gabriel. You can also just confirm that you can hear and see me and I'll also start by sharing my screen. You're just going to confirm that you can see that. Yes, yeah, sure. All good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for for uh, joining this uh, this session. Uh, as Gabriel mentioned, my name is Shaul uh, Kutsia, and I uh, work within the automation division of of First Digital. So we recently started with this um, series of webinars where we focus on chaos to clarity where we start demystifying the area of artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, the technologies that are available, and how you can actually take that and get business value out of it. I think especially lately, there's been a lot of buzzwords, a lot of buzz topics around AI, machine learning. There's been extreme advancements in that area over the last period. And a lot of people have taken notice. Um, but how do you derive value from this? Uh, we've, we've got customers asking, give me AI, but it's not quite as simple as that. The, the field of artificial intelligence and the possibilities within it is extremely vast. So to see how we derive business value from that, we'll just need to take a step back, step into the chaos and see how do we clarify, clarify that. So, in today's session, we'll kind of just talk about what's currently happening. Um, how does that apply to business process automation? Um, and why does it apply to, to business process automation? And how can you actually get value out of it? And then I'll show two short demos of technologies that we use within this space to provide you with value. So why all of a sudden are we talking about AI and all that, and, and and I think the main culprit is this thing called ChatGPT uh, that was released not too long ago, and it kind of took the the the, the world by storm. I think it out it broke the record for the most, the quickest to one million subscribers. Uh, it was within a couple of days because of just how powerful it was. Now I'm aware that a lot of you on this call, especially if you're in the the IT space or maybe the development space has played around with ChatGPT, but for those of you that are not yet familiar with it or has not had the chance to play with it, I'll, I'll show a short example of what the, the capabilities are with ChatGPT. And as, as the name would suggest, at least with the first iteration of ChatGPT, it was a simple chat function uh, where I had the ability to ask this machine uh, question to, and it gives you examples, explain this to me or tell me how's this. And what ChatGPT actually does in the background with the initial release they had, it's that's where machine learning and AI comes in. It has a, a large data set, which it uses algorithms to go through that data set and then formulate the responses for you. So I could tell ChatGPT, I have a webinar that I need to host, and I need, let's say, five pages worth of content. And I'll just say the webinar is on business process automation using AI. As simple as that, I can Ask ChatGPT that question. I've got a webinar. I need five pages worth of content. The 
data on that. So that's a pretty simple example. I'm not giving it a lot of data to, to work off. But what it's doing in the background, it's then formulating a response for me, and it'll actually give me five pages worth of content to say, listen, here's, here's all the content you need. It's taking a bit long now, but it's there it goes. It starts generating. Uh, it's quite a, a, a popular tool at the moment for various, various, various um, implementations. So uh, a lot of people is using it for anything because you can literally ask ChatGPT anything and it actually starts generating the content. And there it will just start generating. There's all the content that I actually need for this webinar that we, we are hosting today. Now, I promise for this webinar, I didn't actually go this route, but to show you the capability of what ChatGPT can do and why the kind of the, the, the buzz around it, that's where it all started. Now, maybe I asked it for, listen, I need to write a proposal for a client, or I need an email explaining this to a client, or I need, uh, tell me what the difference is between this and that. Now, at least with the first iteration, it wasn't perfect. You could kind of catch it out in certain instances and ask it certain questions that it, it might not be able to give you the 100% correct answer. But with the first iteration, the, the, the data that it had, the machine learning algorithms on, was a bit limited. It was limited to the year 2021. So ChatGPT wasn't aware, uh, the three wasn't aware of anything after 2021. So you won't be able to ask it about an event that might have happened last week. It simply wouldn't wouldn't know about that. So I can see it had a bit of a network error there. But it gives you the idea. It can generate all this content for you. And that's what makes it so powerful. And that's what makes AI so powerful. And just a couple of weeks ago, they released the latest version of ChatGPT that is available and that has been started being incorporated in a lot of technologies that we actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. And the great thing is with new iteration, it's capable of um, seeing content, listening to content. So the possibilities with it is, is quite advanced and quite extensive. What, what can happen? I'll show you an example of what Microsoft has started, started doing. Um, just another example, if you want to play around with this one, this is quite uh, cool. I like this. Um, Mid Journey is another implementation of using uh, machine learning and AI where you can actually generate art or you can generate pictures or visual content by simply asking this um, AI to do it for you. And you can ask it for anything. You can say, listen, give me a a pink elephant holding a red umbrella painted in the 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 in a Van Gogh style, and it will actually do that for you. Um, another company is making advancement where it can actually generate videos um, for you. You just tell it, listen, I want a video. It needs to have this character, and it start generating the video. Now, in five, ten years' time, who knows where we're going to be? I may be able to ask this AI, listen. Generate a movie for me. Generate a movie. I want it to have Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. The movie needs to be this long, that, and it will simply generate the movie for you. Um, so it's quite scary, the, the, the possibilities that, that we can do with AI. Recently, a very famous uh, DJ, uh, David Guetta, he generated, he asked AI to generate him lyrics in the style of Eminem. The AI did it for him. He took that lyrics, Put it in another AI that actually mimics the voice of famous people. Um, and within five minutes, he had Eminem singing lyrics that he put in his own song and he didn't even have to phone Eminem for that. So the possibilities and where we're moving with this is quite, it, it's a lot of it's unknown area. And that's that's what makes it quite exciting. So what Microsoft start doing and we will see these functions creeping into the tools that we're using is they've launched what they call Copilot. And Copilot will be available within your normal Office 365 tools, uh, email, um, Outlook, uh, PowerPoint, Word. And the one example we have here is where I've got a blank presentation template. It's blank, um, but I can ask Microsoft Copilot, make me a presentation that helps me celebrate my daughter's birthday, She's in this school, she does these activities. Again, giving the AI data and asking it to generate something for you. 
Um, and by just giving it that information, you're able to generate a PowerPoint presentation within a couple of seconds. Um, and quite nice presenta presentation. So you can think if you've got a up and coming meeting, you need to generate something for this meeting. Um, and just like that, I can generate a, a, a presentation or I can generate a proposal or I can generate a, an email. The, the Outlook one is quite nice where you can give it, please draft an email to this person. This is the topic and that's all we need to do. And it's easy as that you draft an email. So the the efficiency gains that we see with artificial intelligence and its subcategories, machine learning is it, it's quite tremendous, and it's clearly with Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, everyone's focusing on this area at the moment. The the possibilities is 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 quite great. There's going to be a lot of options that we're going to be able to do within the next five years, and we're going to be able to do it a lot quicker. But even with that being said, um, if we look at your that's nice. That's ChatGPT. That's Midway Journey. That's Copilot. But if you look at your organization and you look at your business processes, how do you apply that to your business process and why do you need to apply that to your business processes? Um, over the last two decades, the advancements in business process automation using technologies like this, machine learning, AI, even just the cloud, starting with the cloud has been tremendous and it's made a massive difference. Um, and it has to, because in today's day and age, I'm able to generate a proposal within 10 seconds. Um, so my customers or clients are starting getting used to a much quicker response time or much quicker turnaround time. So my business processes need to follow suit to what's happening in the market. And to be honest with you, the, the AI is so advanced, um, our business processes are not keeping up. In a lot of cases, business processes are very far behind what the capability of uh, technologies within the fourth industrial re revolution is. And that's what we kind of want to have a look at today to say, listen, before we ask ChatGPT to automate my business process for me, how do we actually start on this journey? This Because it is a, a journey. It's not just a my processes are automated and that's the, the end of it. It's quite a journey that you have to walk and I'll show you why. Um, and as recently, it was not even that recently with the advancements that that is being made, PricewaterhouseCoopers released a report um, in 2019 where they stipulated that highly automated organizations are six times more likely to experience annual growth. And it's a simple case of driving efficiency. If I'm more efficient, I'm much more likely to, to, to drive growth. And why is this needed? So from our Nintex um, uh, data that we, we had a look at, 75% uh, of organizations lack visibility of business processes. And you can think of your organization, especially if you have a large organization, you might be fully aware of processes that are happening in your department, your environment, your, that you immediately are involved with. But if you look at the large organization, you're in the IT department, and I might ask you, listen, but explain a process to me in the finance department or payroll department. A lot of people will simply say, listen, I don't have visibility about that process. So I've got, I've got no idea. I, don't, I can't even tell you where, where to start. And that's the first problem. How do you, how do you implement AI and machine learning if you don't even have visibility or over your business processes? Um, the second uh, impact is the lack of resources. Um, resources, both the tools to implement um, these solutions. How do I get these tools? ChatGPT, OpenAI, uh, Midway Journey, uh, the list keeps growing, but how do I actually get access to these technologies so I can start implementing them in my, my business? And then lastly is lack of capability. These technologies have grown tremendously over the last period of time. And then all of a sudden we are expecting people to be experts and we need a lot of experts to come and help us implement this. So how is your organization gaining the capability to understand these technologies and then have the ability to apply them 
to automate your, your business processes. So it's quite high statistics to show um, whilst the technology is growing, our capability to transform our process, use the technology to transform our processes from chaos to clarity is seriously, seriously lacking. So we need to look towards tools to help us do that. And why do we why do we need those tools? This is a diagram that we adapted from uh, Elon Musk Tesla. They've got a, a principle they call the the levels of aut autonomous driving. Now, unfortunately, in South Africa, we don't have the option to buy Teslas. But if you ever seen Teslas, or if you've been in a country that can drive Teslas or can buy Teslas, um, the latest Tesla models have this capability that they call self-driving. The car can, on the highway, drive itself. We've got certain cars in our market that has similar features, lane keep assist and stop sign notifications, those type of things. So what they did at Tesla, they set the levels of automation. Zero being, this is a fully manual car. There's no autonomous um, assistance for that vehicle up until level five, where the car drives itself, parks itself, wash itself, change its own tire, that's full. And the trick is at the moment, Tesla doesn't have anything close to level four, level five implementation for autonomous vehicle driving. They're working towards it, but it's not there yet. And the same thing happens with our business processes. So uh, level zero being a completely uh, manual business process, whether it be physical, labor that needs to be performed, paper-based, that's a level zero process, all the way up until a level five process where you've got business processes that can run itself, report on itself, and have the ability to actually improve itself. Now, again, the level five implementation is almost non-existent, especially within our market. We tend to be uh, still between level zero and three is where we are working at most. So we've got manual based processes and we've got all the way up until unattended processes, but intelligent and full automation, we're, we're simply not, not there yet. So starting to ask the AI questions, we're, we're simply not ready for that. We need to start at the beginning of this automation journey. And we need to understand that there are levels to this. It's not simply, it's, it's, it's not that easy. And how do we get access to, to this journey? How do we, how do we start? Um, First Digital recently uh, did a lot of research in this area to see what is the impact of business process automation on organization. What's the, the, what's the impact of the failure to, to automate business processes? And we asked the question, how do we, we asked a bunch of experts, how do they recommend, how do they see us getting access to these fourth industrial uh, technologies and how do we get our processes to that? And the number one answer was actually cloud. They recommended that we look towards the cloud. And if, if we look at all these technologies that's available these days, whether it be a, a, a data platform or a AI platform or a, uh, any of these platforms, it's all in the cloud. So it, it makes a lot of sense. We need to start looking towards the cloud to gain immediate access to these technologies. And once we're in the cloud, how do we further automate our processes? And RPA is, is something that popped up, uh, then AI and then machine learning. So as far as our journey is concerned, with the advancements in AI and machine learning, we're actually behind a bit. We need to take a step back look at our business, look at our organization, look at our processes and see how do we get all the way from a manual or level zero, implement the cloud, get exposure to all the other technologies and actually then rely on machine learning to tell me how do I automate my, my business process. So again, it's, it, it's a journey from chaos to clarity is not something that, that quite happens in a day. And why is automation important? Another thing we formulated, and this was backed up by the research we did, was to say the, the innovation automation strategy cycle, where we actually found the data to support that the more you automate in your business organization, 
the more technological innovation you will you will naturally adopt. Because if you start automating your business processes, you'll get access to cloud. Uh, once you've got access to the cloud, you've got AI, you've got machine learning, you've got IoT, you've got cloud computing, um, you've got solutions as, as services, software as services. And as soon as you start that automation journey and you go from level one or level zero to level one, that then impacts your strategic innovation because you're already at a new stage. And then that impacts your technological innovation. Because as you go through those stages of the business process automation journey, your technological innovation will increase and it speeds up. So the more you automate, the more technological innovation you will adopt. And what we see is organizations going the other way around. They want to look at the technology first. The question again, uh, or the, the statement, give us AI. We want AI. Great. What AI? Where are we going to use it? What are you going to use it for? Maybe let's first look at your organization. Let's look at what you do have. Um, let's start automating your solutions or your business processes. And then you'll have a natural progression of your strategic thinking, strategic innovation being updated to adopt new technologies. Don't try and force a new technology into your organization if you're not ready for that journey. Just because it's all the hype is around it, let's be smart about this and let's let's follow, um, let's take take this journey. And to implement and help us as an organization as First Digital and help with the projects and solutions that we build, we use one of the technologies and platforms we use is Nintex. I'm sure a lot of the uh, you on this webinar might be familiar with Nintex. It's quite an extensive technology stack. And it's got technologies such as Nintex Automation Cloud, Nintex Automation On-Premise, or as most of you will know it as K2. Um, it's got RPA signature signing. So it, it, it's quite an extensive platform that helps you discover, manage, automate and optimize your, your business processes, really focused around business, business processes. And because we are saying this is a, a journey, this chaos to clarity and machine learning, how does it help me? Let's just take one step back and ask, where do we actually start on this journey? And that would be with managing and discovering uh, your business processes. And how do we actually manage and how do we we discover business processes using the Nintex, Nintex platform? How do I get access to the cloud? How do I get access to, to business process uh, automation tools within Nintex? And the first one is just process mapping. A lot of, a lot of what happens in our environment is use cases where we need to start automating the process. We're starting at the beginning of the journey. And then we ask, listen, but show me your business process. Tell me about your business process. I want to see what, what the, the situation is. And 75% of the time, the response is, uh, we don't know. I can't tell you my business process. Or we will need to have a workshop. Uh, or there's one user in a corner that's been there for uh, 10, 20 years, and they they are the only one that truly understands the the business process, and that's a that's a a, a great concern actually for an organisation, because if uh, if you don't have your business process mapped, um, do you ever truly understand it? Now, do you explain that to someone else? Maybe you need someone needs to audit you or something like that, and show me your business process, and if you can't map your business process how do you manage your business process or understand your your business process and you can only measure that which you can manage so this it, it, it's a it's a journey so the start would be to actually map your business processes using a cloud-based technology so we're starting with the cloud called nintex process uh, process mapping or in the old terms it was called promap and it's a very simple implementation, but it gives you extremely rich functionality where we can actually start mapping your business processes, making it available to everyone within your organization, having people collaborate on business processes. So as I start designing my business process, I can actually have people collaborate on it. I can have different versions of my business process. You can have business processes that are continuously changing. You can have business processes talking to each other. 
And that's the power of Promo. Let's just map your business processes first. And I'll show you an example of what we personally did in our organization to start mapping uh, our business processes. Uh, so I'll go back to my virtual machine. I'll just refresh this page. This is our actual um, ProMap environment where we can map processes. We can start by defining different areas that we've got business processes in. So we're using this as our training environment too. So I've got training in there. I've got testing. I've got our HR um, environment. I've got, you can do information technology, but you get the idea. You can group your business processes. And then you can actually start designing and building your, your, your business processes. So this is a fantastic tool, especially for business analysts. If they want to start mapping processes with, within a business. And it uses the simple diagram format of you being able to let me. So one business process has been sent for, for review to me, where I can actually see that this person designed a simple business process. It gives me clear indication of inputs, outputs, stakeholders that are involved. Um, and every step of the way, it gives you the the breakdown of that process. So step number one, identify the customer. And if I look at the step, it actually gives me the, the more detail around what needs to happen there. What do I need to, to do? Who's involved? Is there any documents that I need to add in here? You can actually add the documents um, in there. So you can send that to, um, to, to someone. Uh, and then think of the scenarios where you can actually use this in. Maybe I've got a new starter in my organization um, in a specific department. They are asking me, listen, how does your procurement process work? Because I need to talk to someone about procurement or I am new to this department. All you do is you point them to the ProMap environment or you actually share the business process with them. So you can go to your um, business processes. I'll go to that that we've got in in first digital and i can actually just share a business process with someone i can email it to them i can give them access to this um to this environment and they can actually go and have a look and say cool this is the actual business process this is how it flows these are the 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 steps on that are involved this is the owner this is the change log this is the documents that are attached to this process this one won't have any um have any documents. And these are quite simple processes that we are using for today's example. But I'm pretty sure that all of you are aware of a quite extensive process in your organization or your department that if one step is missed or we do something wrong, uh, it's not quite the, um, it's it, the whole process kind of falls apart. But again, how do we manage manage this process? How, how is this put together. And this is where ProMap comes in. First, start mapping your actual business processes before you start thinking about how do I automate it? How do I apply AI? And how do I apply machine learning? Just start by actually mapping your business processes. That would be the, the, the first suggestion that we make. And we use this in our processes with our uh, projects and customers and clients where we say, okay, let's sit down, let's map this. Because again, a, a visual representation of your business process tells you a lot about the business process. Um, and that's just a small taste. I mean, we can build the process out for you and you can actually see this in action. Uh, and at the end of the webinar, we all have details around how you can contact us and actually have a look and we can do maybe a more in-depth discussion on ProMap and map one of your business processes you can actually see it working then the the the, the ultimate next question uh, we do get is how do you map a business process if you don't if you're not even aware of the business process or how do you automate a business process um, if you are not aware of the the automation capabilities what happens a lot in organizations is you might be aware of a business process or you might not be, um, but you might not necessarily be aware about what the capabilities of business process automation is, what the tools are. So if I, again, AI and machine learning is, is, is a vast implementation. 
have a look at the other technologies, IoT, RPA. What is the possibilities with RPA? Uh, how does anyone ever know? You know, we we specialized in it, so we can tell you what the possibilities are. But we also rely on our engagement for uh, the users to tell us what the actual business process is, and then we can apply the tech the techniques to actually say, well, we can actually automate it like that. That we can use RPA, or we can use uh, Nintex Workflow Cloud, or we can use a workflow platform, Power Automate, Power Platform. There's so many possibilities. But how do you know what you don't know? That's that's the question. How do you identify processes that you're not even aware of? And that's when Nintex has a great tool called process discovery. How can I discover actual processes using machine learning, AI and, and, and machine learning? How do I actually discover processes? So as I mentioned earlier, machine learning is a simple, in layman's terms, it takes a large data set or it takes data, it applies certain algorithms, and it makes sense of the data and gives that out to you. The more data it generally has, the better the output is that it can provide to you. And that's what process discovery does. The tool from Nintex, what it does is it actually monitors what users on their machines do on a daily basis. So I install a very small client on your laptop and it actually monitors what you do on a daily basis. Now, before we, you know, the tool is smart enough to only monitor certain applications, only monitor certain data. So, you know, the user, not everything will be monitored. If the user might be watching a video or doing something else, that might not be monitored. You do have the option to only monitor certain applications. Maybe the users in my finance department, I only want to monitor SAP, and that's then what I'll do. But it monitors what the user does on a daily basis, and it syncs that up to a server, a central repository. Now, you can think, if I've got 20 users in my finance department, I install this small piece of software in all of their machines, they don't notice it's there. It watches what they do on a daily basis, and it syncs all of that data up to a central server. And then once we're ready, we apply those algorithms to start making sense of that data. And then what process discovery actually does is it says, cool, I've got data for about a week. I've looked at what these users were doing. I've actually taken screenshots of what they've been doing. From what I can see and what these users did on a daily basis, there's actually a business process in there. There's a business process that you can actually automate um, and that was then done it te actually tells you listen do this with rpa or do this with a workflow platform but it tells you what you do not know and to show you how this works i'll go back to my my virtual uh, virtual machine so this is a normal machine that i've got up and running that small piece of process discovery software i've installed there it's called Cron process discovery. It starts up automatically. Um, I'll just need to update it. Uh, it starts up automatically with the with the machine, and it actually monitors what I do on this machine on a daily basis. Uh, I've set it to just monitor everything because I want as much data as possible. With machine learning, data is key. The more valuable data you do have, or the more data you do have the better your outcome, especially with machine learning is. So it's, it's very important to have a lot of a lot of data. And on the same machine, I installed uh, Nintex Process Discovery, the server, so I'll open that. Uh, I'll just refresh it to make sure we've got the, the latest uh, uh, data. And I've been playing around with it, so that it's already been seeing what I've what I've been doing and had a look at, at, at what I've been doing. So it actually tells me the applications that I've been using and, and what's been happening. And to show you a simple example, let's say we've got a user, I've got a form here that I built in in K2. Again, some of you are very familiar with, with, with K2. I've got a simple form that I've built here in K2 and the function is very simple. Uh, this user downloads an Excel document. They open the Excel document. They then capture the data into, um, this form that I've built. 
it's a very rudimentary process, but for the purposes of this demo, it showcases what we kind of want to display to you. So I also have, uh, I'll open my Excel document. It's just some timesheets. We as our, our um, developers and so on log timesheets. So now I've got some timesheets there for, for Adrian and Johan that I can have a look at. How much did they do? Where did they do it? And then simply a very manual process. I will go and copy paste. Uh, copy paste the, the data uh, in there or I'll start capturing the data or even not even just copy paste. I will the program will pick up if I'm simply. Seeing OK, I should pull live, so I'm going to type in. I'm just going to type in data and it automatically has a look at, OK, this is what the person is doing. They're capturing data. It's a pretty simple process. And I'll just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to capture one line. We do have enough data in the uh, in the system that we can actually make use of. Repeating a manual process that a user might do on a on a daily daily basis. So I'll actually just do that. There we go. And then I'll click create and it actually captures what I what I've done. And if I go to my process discovery tool, it actually picks up. Listen, but this person opened this URL. They opened Excel, um, Explorer, they opened Bright Plan, they opened Chat, Open AI. So it captures everything that I did. Now, again, if you do not want to capture all of the information that your users are doing, you can limit it to say, listen, I only want to capture one or two specific applications. And even with that, um, let's say again in the finance department, I'm busy with my finance users. I'm only capturing what they do on the finance system. But this process discovery tool, what it also does is it captures actual screenshots and videos of what the users are doing. That might be a concern because now I'm capturing screenshots of financial data, which might be sensitive. You can tell the tool to actually mask the data so hide the data from anyone that's able to see the data um, on the process discovery server because the process discovery server is not that concerned with the actual data it's concerned with the process that it's actually busy with not the actual data data uh, doesn't matter in this case so again i've run I've, I've ran this on multiple users machines i've captured a lot of data what I then can do is I can tell the server to please go and capture, uh, run that those machine learning algorithms and actually identify processes in my environment that I can automate. And if I click discover, that's actually what it's now doing. So it's running those machine learning algorithms, looking at the data that I fed it, and the, again, the more data you feed it, the better it will be to um, identify processes. In our environment, we have limited because I only want to identify that one single process that we did have a look at. And then it actually does it. It says, listen, I've identified this one process that I can continuously see being repeated by this specific user or multiple users. And I would recommend that we actually automate this process and it gives you a process flow it gives you the process diagram and it actually tells you what technologies you can use and it's not limited to nintex in that case it'll actually tell you this is the rpa in this case i would recommend using a robotic process or rpa bot to go and get the data out of the excel file and read it into a, a, a form that's a very simple example uh, but it is the start of the automation journey. And then it might tell you for more advanced business processes, what are the next steps that you can take? Uh, and it's a very smart tool in that instance. It doesn't only show you um, your specific business process. It actually shows you this is the process we picked up most of the time. There's a slight deviation in some instances. So most of these users follow this process. A slight deviation where one user follows this process so it's it's smart enough to pick up actual complex business processes making 
clarity from that chaos that you had. And you can add these to multiple users. You can add it in different departments. You can add it in uh, for different periods of time. And then you can actually discover the processes. And we recently had an event, in-person event, where we showcased the capabilities of process discovery. Um, and one of the business analysts that, that were there said that this tool basically replaced what they needed to do over the last couple of weeks. Because what they did in their environment is they actually had video recording software record what the user did. And then the business analyst would run through that recording at twice the speed and visually see if they could identify any business processes that they could automate, which is a, a, a process to follow. But if you have this tool, there's no need to for a business analyst to spend time trying to identify via video that some of the users did to actually automate business processes. This tool will automatically pick up what business processes you, would, you could automate, and that's what makes it powerful. And that's what gets you started on your journey from now I've discovered my actual business processes, which is great. I never knew I had a business process that I, I needed to automate. And now I can actually map that business processes using ProMap. And then once I've done that, let's then start talking about, cool, what's the next level? How do I get through those levels of automation? How do I now ask ChatGPT, listen, this is my actual process. Um, it's recommending this. How do I further automate it? How do I ask Microsoft Copilot to assist me with, in my 3.6 environment, 3.6.5 environment, actually automating, uh, automating the process? And with process discovery, it will take you through 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 most of those steps. So in conclusion, why do we need to look at AI and machine learning and all the, the fun tools that come with it um, for business process automation purposes? Most organizations, uh, to stay competitive, they'll need to look at it. Customers, again, the, the example that I showed in the beginning, if I can generate a, a PowerPoint proposal within a couple of seconds using Copilot, um, why would my customers not be expecting quicker turnaround and faster service from me as an organization? The only way I'm going to achieve that is through driving efficiency, using fourth industrial uh, revolution technologies, automating my processes. Um, and if you look at cloud, if you look at how easy it is to chat GPT for those who, and I think I'm pretty sure most of you have got access to it by now. If you don't have access, just Google it, create an account, all of a sudden you do have access. It gets busy towards the end of the day and then they might tell you, listen, we had capacity right now, but generally this time around, you can ask that, that, that solution anything and it'll give you an answer. It's not always the right answer, but it'll give you an answer. And for organizations to really stay competitive, what organizations could be more competitive? The one that's automated using the latest technologies or the one that's that's still a bit behind and still has processes at level zero and level one. You really need to start looking at these technologies to help you automate your, your, your business processes. And while AI is this vast and, 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 and sometimes confusing area with the, the number of solutions currently out there and technologies out there, um, we are quite excited uh, about the capabilities of it. Um, it's going to help take business process automation to level five. And that's something that we are exploring and we're going to do this in the next webinar that we host where we go from chaos to clarity to improvement, where we actually look at level five business process automation, where I can have a business process that can run itself, a report on itself. And if it actually detects through process discovery efficiencies that it can implement on itself, my business process will be able to self-heal to an extent, but it will actually be able to improve itself and drive efficiencies itself. Now, we're not there yet, but um, at the pace we are going, I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of years, we actually start uh, looking in that area. So quite exciting what lies ahead. Um, if anyone is interested in exploring these technologies a bit more, again, at the end of the webinar, we will uh, be sharing details and please do reach out if you would like uh, more information on what we have shared shared today. 
So thank you very much, everyone. That's that. That's all from me. I'm going to hand over back to to Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you. Over to you. You you're on mute, Gabriel. Thank you, Shaul. That old mute bugbear. Thank you so much, Shaul, and thank you for giving us such a clear view uh, and, a, and a really practical example of how these modern technologies, including machine learning, can, can assist businesses um, with discovering uh, business processes and, and, and suggest ways to automate them. And I think really that's the point that we try to make in today's session is that uh, although there's a lot of concern about the disruption that the technology can bring, there are already tools out there that's leveraging this new capability uh, and 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 today you you saw a, a practical example of that. Um, I'm going to go over to questions. We've still got about eight minutes left uh, on the call, so I see one question has already been posted. I answered that. Uh, Emil uh, Swanepoel asked if there's a dependency for Nintex on SharePoint. Now, obviously, those of you that's got a, a, a bit of uh, a view of the history of Nintex, it, yes, it did have humble beginnings as a workflow add-on for SharePoint. But there are no dependency now on SharePoint in the in the modern uh, set of tools, um, and it can run and function completely independently uh, on its own uh, without a reliance on SharePoint. And obviously, the integration capabilities that it that it had in SharePoint obviously still exist. So, so if if that is part of your technical solution, or your technical footprint uh, integration is as strong as it used to be uh, in the you know in the previous generation of Nintex tools. Great. Uh, Charlotte, I don't know if you want to add anything further to that question. No, I think that perfectly summar summarizes it. Thank you, Gabriel. OK, great. Um, here's a question from Werner, so I'm just going to read it out verbatim. Um, I'm concerned that people will become lazy when it comes to innovate and think outside the box with regards to the capabilities of AI and chat GPT. Um, that is a, a concern. Uh, there's also the concern about the fact that there's certain um, industries that's going to be badly disrupted by this in the future, um, a concern for uh, loss of employment opportunities in certain industries, etc. And, and, I, and I think there is there's definitely value in that concern. Um, we, however, see these tools and tool sets that are becoming available as complementary. And, and I think, again, today's example um, uh, was one way the, the, the tool set is embraced to actually improve efficiency, for instance, discovering process that doesn't exist um, in order for that person that's responsible for that task to, to, to focus on the core uh, challenge at hand, which is to actually you know, address the concern, address the issue. And then after those processes have been identified, is to start looking at driving efficiency by automating them. Charlotte, I don't know if you want to add any more to, to that uh, question. Um, you, you have a lot of uh, conversations around AI and chat GPT and the disruption sure. that people are concerned about. Sure, Gabriel. Yeah, I'm, and I, 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 to extend on Werner's uh, statement there, it, it is quite true. Um, we are also looking and exploring at uh, the ethical implementations of AI. We've had instances um, now where we've um, students, students, you know, I need to write a, a speech. Um, you ask ChatGPT and your speech is written. Uh, students at INISA are doing assignments through ChatGPT. So there's quite a, a concern there. But um, from our perspective, we want to put a positive spin on it uh, to say um, we should actually use it to enhance our capabilities. Um, I think if applied properly, we would be able to get done a lot more in a lot quicker time. And that's the, the kind of the way we want to, to look at it. But it is it, it's a genuine concern to see that um, the capabilities of AI might lessen the capabilities of humans to a certain extent, and that's a very open topic that they are debating every single day. Yes, yeah. Um, just to conclude on that uh, statement, they show uh, first technology is busy with the national roadshow. We, we had our first one in Bloemfontein. And I think next up uh, later in a couple of months time will be Durban and uh, Polokwane regions um, where uh, one of the founding uh, members of, of the first technology group, um, Barry Nietling, made, made a quite a good statement to say um, the, the knowledge of how to leverage these tools and the knowledge about how to benefit from these tools 
are going to be similar to having two candidates for job interview where the one has got uh, quite advanced Excel skills and the other person doesn't. Um, uh, it's going to be seen you know, as that kind of pervasive technology that is going to have to be a, a core capability that any reasonable recruit or employee need to have um, uh, in the future, rather than necessarily replacing them um, you know, as an as a employee. Good. Uh, Mr. Swanepoel posted another question, asked if we can come and do a demo on site. Absolutely. As you know, First Digital is represented um, with a physical presence in the Gauteng area, in KZN and in the Western Cape. Uh, Emil, I incidentally know that you're Durban based, so that can be arranged, definitely. And somebody will make contact with you afterwards. Great. So those are all the questions. Um, uh, we've got three minutes left on the call, so I'll give those three minutes back to you guys into your diary. Uh, I want to thank Shaul for, for, for doing the presentation. Um, thanks, Stephanie, who's our marketing coordinator, who, who really does uh, uh, run all the gears in the background for these webinars. Like I said, the recording will be made available and posted to our YouTube channel. Um, there, there is a link on the screen now to our, to our channel, um, but all of you will be mailed as soon as this recording is available, and you can go and check that out or forward it to a colleague um, that might have missed today's session. Um, and if you want to reach out to Shoal and his team in our automation division inside First Digital, uh, there's the email address, automation at firsttech.digital, and they'll raise and they'll they'll reach out to you. Um, so from my side, thank you. Thank you for joining us today and uh, uh, have a great day.